Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name is Jared Lee, and I'm joined, as usual, by my lovely wife, Jamie Lee. So, Jamie, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jared. How are you? I'm good. I feel somewhat accomplished, kind of, sort of. Uh, I did finally get all of the Christmas lights up just two weeks before Christmas. Yay. Which is weird, because we got all the interior stuff up. Like, I mean, you were on it the day after November Halloween. November 1st. Right. Um And then we got busy. Well, I think a lot of it it was when we traveled to Missouri. Yeah. That threw it off. And then we got busy like printing shirts and stuff. And then I was finally like, okay, I got it. Either I'm going to do it now or it's not going to happen this year. And I didn't (laughs) want that to happen. So did finally get those. But we we ended up getting uh, being very festive. So we've (laughs) we've collected a bunch of inflatables that go in the yard over the years. So we've got like Mickey, Minnie, Olaf, Sven, and um, there's... I thought there was a different one out there. Uh, anyway. We have a minion. Don't we have a minion? No, we don't have a minion. We oh, were going to okay. get a minion. I think we got it something else. But Okay. And then our son, there's a house in our neighborhood that literally has 25 inflatable dinosaur Christmas inflatables. Yes. And he loves them. And he loves dinosaurs. So <laughs> we got a dinosaur. I guess he's trying to eat a Christmas tree. It's cute. It's something. So it's we got cute. that along with some lights. Um, does it make sense? I don't know. It's Christmas it's light all though. Good. And there's it's lights. It's all good. And then our daughter picked out a projector that projects snow on the house because she said it doesn't snow in Florida. So she's, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. So that's what we have, and it looks great. And there you go. It's finally up. Yes. And then it will stay up until apparently Jamie told me about King's Day. Three Kings Day. Three Kings Day. Uh-huh. Which is like January fifth. I guess six. Because my question was like, when is it? A pro, like when is it becoming like not okay to leave your Christmas lights up? Personally speaking, I mean, I think if they stay up year round, I think that's okay. But I, I know even our neighborhood, we can't do that. We'll get a letter. We will get a letter. But I'm most curious, like generally speaking, with like socially, when is it like? I, I feel like February. Like by the time you hit February, <laughs> you know, it's like okay. No, no. I mean, I think around New Year's, New Year's Day. Is around when you want to start doing but it. But January is such a, just a blah month though. Like I yeah. think, I don't, okay. When we lived in Missouri, I despised January and February. <laughs> like those are the two months that I just, I don't know. They're, they're always dark and they were cold. And then it felt like you're just waiting for spring. So down here, I don't despise them because it's actually really nice weather and right. things. So mentally, it's still strange for me. So in my head, though, January is still kind of this month where it's like you, you know, you have the new year, but it's like it's just it's still January. I don't know. I, I yeah. look at January as such a strange month compared to the rest. It's, it's you know, it, it's it's not too bad here. It, you know, it, it gets into the probably low 30s sometimes um, I mean, it, it can, yeah. at, at night, um, but typically it doesn't really get much colder than that. Yeah. You know, which is my nice. whole point of saying this is don't tell me what to do with my Christmas lights. Right. I will do no. whatever I want to do with them. Please don't. Just help. don't. <laughs> Just, you know, if I want to leave them up till March, I'll leave them up till March. But anyways, mm. uh, one thing I was going to say, I, I showed our daughter. I don't know because, you know, we've talked about like we like Legos and our kids like Legos. Mm-hmm. Um, they have this new. So I know what you're going to say. Jared, you're really cool because I'm a grown man who has kind of started playing Fortnite a little bit. It's actually kind of fun. My friend got me into it to play a little bit. But they came up with this new mode. And don't at me. Okay. And I know when I get killed in Fortnite, it's some kid. Right. It's just some kid that did it. And, you know, it's fine. I'll figure it out. But um, they ha- they came up with a mode like Lego Fortnite. Mm-hmm. So it's basically Minecraft with Legos. It's actually kind of fun. I, I had our, our daughter play it a little bit. And then, like, I actually played around with it to see what you can do. I think it's one of those games. It's built for kids. Like, it says, like, 10 and up. But if you got kids that like Legos, they would probably like it because you like basically they just plop you down into like a plot of land and you mm-hmm. build a society. Okay. Kind of. But I always like those games like Sim City and those types of things where like you build stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was just going to put it out there. If, if your uh, kids are into Legos, maybe over the Christmas break, if they want something to play. Because again, it's free because it's Fortnite. You can It's free to play. Okay. So just saying, it's actually kind of a cool mode. All right. So there you go. So, all right. Well, we're not going to talk about Fortnite and Lego, which uh, I'd be okay with doing if we want to do that, but we won't. Uh, we do have a little bit of news we're going to talk about. Hopefully, so we're recording this on a Tuesday because we're going to Disney on Thursday, and we figured we'd do it now versus there's a lot of stuff we got to do between now and 
Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So we're like, let's just go and do it now. So hopefully no major news breaks between now and Thursday. Hopefully. But it's been slow (laughs) lately. But yeah. Have a little bit of news we're going to talk about. And then uh, we have a discussion today, which we haven't done one of these. I don't know if we've ever done one of these, actually. But Jamie kind of came up with this called Mm -hmm. What Should Go There? So we're basically going to, we've got like four areas that we're going to, you know, like attractions, attractions, a land, like what is there and what we think should go there. So, which is kind of fun. I like doing those. Well, the whole thing is these things are abandoned or closed. So it's like, well, it's not, it's not, nothing is there right now. So, what should Disney do with the space that they haven't, you know, already Right. Done? That's a better way to put it. It's yeah. not like, yeah, okay, we're taking abandoned places. So yes, I guess you yes, could yes. call it, no one loves this land. Will you? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> They're lonely. They just want to hang out with people, I guess. Anyways, <laughs> that's what we're going to do today. But uh, before we get to the news, just want to remind everybody, if you're watching us on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to us on podcasts, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts from, Please subscribe and leave us a review if you would in mind, please. And for those that did do the, uh, we asked a few weeks ago, if you know you send in a review, we give you a free t-shirt. Your we t-shirt. Will, we'll get to those. Your t-shirt's on the way. We'll get to um, those. I'm barely able to, like, yeah. one of the reasons we're recording now is because between now and Thursday, uh, it's iffy on a, getting all these shirts out as it is. So we will get your shirts to you. It just yes. won't be during this big press before Christmas, but your shirts will yeah. get to you. But for those that, that didn't get a shirt or, or haven't got a shirt yet, we would still love your review. So if you if you do give us a review, um, I w- I'll give you admiration. We'll even give you a shout out if you want. There you go. Okay. If you want, then we'll do this. If you want a shout out on the show, uh, send us a, a screenshot of your review and then uh, to hello at ctm.show and we'll, we will say hello to you. All right. That's we did not discuss this before the show. It's so a random thing. Just hearing this now. Jamie's used to this. I just uh, yeah. it just came to me. So <laughs> and I we will actually do that if that's what you sure. want. So not like I'm not gonna read a whole uh, essay. We'll just say, Hey, thanks, David such and such, if that's your name or, or you know, whatever. You get a little phrase, whatever, that's fine. But we'll do that. So anyways. And uh, if you like even more content, uh, you should check out Club 32, which is it's sort of like our own Patreon, but we just host it on our end. And that's where we have additional content like Cool Kids Kitchen, which we did on this last Friday. And we made the Linzer cookie that you can find over in Epcot. And we made a frozen hot chocolate martini, which turned out pretty good. Really good. And then uh, we're going to do some streams, probably some just you know lounging, maybe some gaming streams over the Christmas break. Uh, and then we're going to do some streams from the park. So at least probably Luminous will stream and maybe yeah. the um, we're going to stay in the Little Mermaid room. So we'll probably do. Yeah, that. we'll probably do a uh, room tour of that because we haven't stayed there in a long time. Yeah. So. And then we have the Club 32 show. We live stream. We do every Tuesday and there's our private podcast feed. There's 20 percent off of C-Team Apparel and 1901 Candle Company products all the year round. Uh, there's a, uh, so I already said private podcast feeds. There's a private Facebook group. There's a Discord as well, which we will be doing more stuff with and uh, all sorts of things there. So if, again, you can go to ctmvip.com if you want to go check that out. We have monthly or yearly options. And um, yeah, you can do a free trial if you want. So there you go, ctmvip.com. And if you want to join there, we'd love to have you. So, All right, well, let's get to the news. Like we said, not a ton here, but the first one we have is you may remember with... The Epcot, what's the what's Gardens World Celebration World Gardens. Celebration Gardens had just opened. All these new names at Epcot, it I still think of them how it used to be. So I'm still getting used to all these future names. world. Yeah, uh, the new area at Epcot opened, and they have the Walt statue. And if you remember, there were very long lines for the Walt statue, and I remember saying, "I'm gonna guess it's gonna be much less." And granted, I thought within a couple of weeks or a month or so, mm-hmm. but apparently those lines are much lower. Than they were last week. Yeah, the Walt the Dreamer statue in the area kind of he kind of sits on like a ledge, kind of looking out toward World Showcase. Um, last week it was like an hour plus to take a picture with the photo pass photographer, and as of today, Tuesday, the line was maybe ten minutes. Which maybe. is what I could see it being even less, but I could. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I was envisioning is like eventually this will be 10, 15 minutes at most. For most yeah. people, I think. Well, it's nice to have it. I mean, I, I, it's like the partner statue at Magic Kingdom um, where people want to take pictures in it. And it doesn't, you don't have to wait that long, but you may have a line. I mean, like, it's not a big deal, but um, 
Yeah, I'm glad to take a picture with it. I want to see it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm the, I think that, I mean, the same thing with like Moana thing. When that first opened, it was all these lines and, you know, now it's, you don't, you just walk through it. There's right. No, you know. And the lighting and the music has changed a little bit in the gardens area. So sometimes the music doesn't play. Sometimes the lighting is not on or it's not changing with the spaceship earth. So it just depends on when you're there. But I think they're still trying to work some of those kinks out. So if you, if you visit the, in, you know, the next little bit, just be prepared for that. Right. All right. Uh, the next bit of news we have is uh, the Summer House on the Lake, which is a restaurant, is opening on Thursday at Disney Springs. Yeah. So this was, I think, a little delayed. Like it was supposed to open this summer. Um, and would, would make sense for a place called Summer House. <laughs> right. Um, so it is opening on Thursday. They just did like a soft opening today. And um, I think so. Okay. So I looked at reservations. So it's not we're not taking reservations on MDE yet, but you can make one for open table. Mm-hmm. So I went ahead and made one for us on Saturday. So hopefully we'll get to do it. And it, it said only outdoor seating only. Like you can only make a reservation for that. I was like, hmm, okay. So again, we'll see we'll see what happens. But they have brunch. You know, I love a good brunch in my life. I like to brunch it up. So this place is only open until like three o'clock or something no no no. they do breakfast lunch they do brunch lunch and dinner oh they do do that. so okay. but they just do brunch on the weekends gotcha so um we'll see if we can get into brunch i say we'll see because it's supposed to rain a lot on saturday so we'll see how much we get to do on saturday we may not get to go to this place especially if you eat outside so we'll see <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll uh, see uh, but i would like to do it do they not have umbrellas but like it's covered. I mean, like you can sit there and it's uh, it's covered. It's just if it's raining hard, like, right? Yeah, you, know, yeah, I, yeah. you don't want to do that. So I mean, I will say it's a very literal name. Summer no. House on the Lake. Well, it's not the only one. Like I know, but I remember when this came in and I was just like, this is such a strange name for a restaurant. It's just like it's like a phrase. Well, I looked at the menu and the menu looks really good, really good. No, it, like everything about it, like yeah. the ambiance of it, the menu looked pretty good. It's just the name. I was always like, that's such a strange name. They have like a cookie, like, sta- like I think it's like a cookie station or something, um, like bakery area. Like, um, I'm, But like I'm usually you talk it. about when you're going with friends, you're like, oh, where do you want to go eat? And, you know, you think of like everything's like hugely shorthanded. Like, you know, no, we're going to go to the house. Like, we're going to go in the summer. And they'd be like, You have a summer on house on the lake? Be like, no, it's a restaurant. Like, I feel like there's a lot of explaining with this name versus, like, I would, you know, a place I think you just call it, like, we're, you know, summer house. I feel like summer house would, would have been just fine, but you had on the lake, which I get because the summer house on the lake is nice, but I feel like it's just very descriptive for a restaurant. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. Thanks for letting me know, you know. I mean, but okay, on their website, it does, they put summer house in the big lettering and then it's like on, on the, lake the lake is small. Right. So I feel like you're just going to call this summer house. I mean, probably, yeah. I'm not going to call it on the lake. I'll the summer I house. Like, yeah, it's, summer it's, house. it's just a long thing. And this is on the west side. Of, is it on a lake? I don't know. If, I don't know if it, is it on the water? the water. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been to Disney Springs in a long That's going to be really fun. I'm trying to think where this would be if it doesn't, if it's not actually on the water, but it's called summer house on the lake. That's just, I don't know why it's kind of funny to me. <laughs> I think, it, I think it is. You know, to be I would honest, hope I need so. to. It's gonna be really weird. If like, welcome to Summer House on the Lake. Where's the lake? We don't have one. I mean, we have a TV. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Again, I think the menu looks cool. I'm not really familiar with this place, but the menu for the brunch looks good. But it's like California style, beachy uh, vibes. I mean, it definitely does have beach vibes. Mm-hmm. Or lake, I guess it would have to be lake vibes. I mean, I'm, I'm see, very but when excited. I think of lake, I think of Missouri oh. lakes. <clears throat> Are they on the water? Okay, so I look, I found a picture of it, and no, it's 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 kind of on the water, like it <laughs> overlooks the water. It's water adjacent. It's, it's water adjacent. <laughs> like the, the water's right there. Summer house on the lake. Sort of. <laughs> no, the water is right there. It's, it's yeah, good. but you're not like on the lake. I mean, okay, okay, so it's right next to the the food truck area. So that's not. I mean, yeah. That's where but, it is. Okay. Right. Right. I couldn't picture where it was. I was that makes trouble. sense. I, I. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it does overlook the water. Yes, but if you told somebody, "Hey, you want to go to my lake house?" and they'd be like, "Yeah," and then you go there and you're like, "Well, it's lake adjacent." I feel like you'd be like, <laughs> "Oh." This one is not lake adjacent. This is on the water. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> I mean, kind of, but okay. But like looking at the prices, prices aren't that bad. I mean, they're not terrible for Disney prices, no. and it's like it's. I, now the portion sizes, I I will see. I mean, uh-huh. that does. Sound, I like brunch a lot, so love brunch. Although they have a cheeseburger for twenty dollars, which seems crazy to me. Well, but don't, don't again. The there's some Disney cheeseburgers that are twenty dollars as well. So, I have apple cinnamon waffles. Ooh, so good. I mean, I will say a three egg breakfast for seventeen ninety five. I'm like, I can, I could get like. That's a that's a little yeah, bit but pricey. you don't make it like they make it. How do they make it? I don't know. I haven't been there. <laughs> <laughs> they better make it. It's a new f- newfound way. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I know I'm judging a lot about this place that I know nothing about. True. I'm just going off of the naming and the fact that it's lake adjacent. I feel it's like it's not lake adjacent. I feel like they should have said on the water. Summer it's house. Right there. Lake adjacent. It's not. It's where the, it's right near the water. It's okay, right but there. near and on are different. How do you want to be on the water? Like you're do you literally want like boathouse. Yeah, is that's that on. That would be on the lake. Well, uh, to me, I now this is just how that. this is how I'm thinking. If somebody <laughs> tells me we're going to a restaurant on the uh, water, I would assume you're talking about a restaurant where you have the option to sit in an area that like overlooks the water. It, if we get there and they're is. like. Where's the water? And they go, oh yeah, it's 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 over there. Like, no, it's it's overlooking the water. It's just it's not. There's not like okay, a dock. I'll on have it. to I'll have to see this okay. for myself. All right. Listen, this is going to go a this lot is, into the review. This is be like food about. was great, but they're adjacent to lake and the naming are just. Well, I'm happy they have a lot of kids options. They've got mac and cheese. They got quesadillas, cheeseburger, pizza, turkey meatballs, and pasta, scrambled eggs. Be a breakfast for dinner thing, which sounds cool. Uh, chicken fingers and grilled cheese. That's like a lot of options for kids. That is. I'm tempted, by I the mean, way. All if, 10 I, bucks. if I want eggs, I'm going to go with, I don't know who Brody is, but his scrambled eggs. It's cage free eggs. Berries. You don't like berries. I'll take the, well, not the berries, but it's only $10 for that. I'm just saying. I see multiple eggs in well, that one. Anyway, well, how about I won't we try something. I'm not going to get eggs at a restaurant. I eat eggs every day. I'm not going to go get a, okay. eggs at a restaurant. But anyways, OK, I'll try something else. But yeah, sounds, that's sounds we'll great. see if we can go here and not get soaked. That would be great. I don't want it to rain at all. We'll see. We, we will see. So let's move on. <laughs> all right. Uh, there are a couple of parks that are at capacity for park reservations close to Christmas. And those parks are. So Magic Kingdom is closed for, not closed for capacity, at capacity for park reservations for December 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and 25th. And Hollywood Studios is at capacity for December 19th. So the 19th is a very busy day. Mm -hmm. This makes sense, though, because uh, um, December 19th is the last day for pass holders. If you are a sorcerer, pirate... And Pixie Pass. I think that's the last day of the year. Um, so that's the last day we could go to. So a lot of people will go on that day. But uh, APs can still visit any park after two without a reservation, even if it is at capacity, except for Magic Kingdom on Saturday and Sunday. Did I confuse you? Was that confusing? I mean, it's not to me, but <laughs> okay. to someone who's right. not into the loop, it'd probably be a little confusing. Right. That's like... Yeah, makes my brain hurt. Um, so yeah, so if you're coming in the next little bit here, just you know, get ready for those crowds, man. It's gonna be busy. As holidays typically are at Disney and most Truth. theme parks like that, but yeah. Truth. All right, uh, the last bit of news we have is the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin have some festivities going on for the holidays. They do. So they have a couple new things, but some things that are returning. Um, so you can go to, a th- well, the first thing is they have an elf outpost, which is basically like a, like a tour, like basically Santa's elves or have a tour of their elf post. They show you the toy workshop, bakery, you get complimentary cookie decorating, fully stocked toy workshop, crafts, toys for purchase. How do they have time for this? They need to be working right know, now. Right. They don't even have time for giving tours. Um, also, twice nightly, the elves will treat guests to milk and cookies and a special reading of the Christmas classic, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Um, you can also receive your own book to take home. And this is a paid experience. You can also meet Santa and Mrs. Claus and Candy Cane, their 
like elf helper. Um, uh, Wait, their name is Candy Cane? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I thought that was like a verb. You're going to candy cane them. I was like, I don't know what that means. It's a unique photo opportunity because it's got a Florida flare with reindeer, palm trees, flamingos, all in like holiday cheer background. I like that. There's a life-size chocolate holiday Santa. Seven foot tall, 400 pound chocolate nutcracker. A chocolate fireplace, a chocolate Christmas tree, a chocolate toy train, chocolate Santa. Okay. All in this one. Dang. Okay. 100% edible. Uh, magic keys for Santa on Christmas Eve. Um, that's kind of cool. You put your key on the outside of your room if you have kids there, and um, you can help Santa find your find your find your room. Like he knows where you are in the hotel, since there you know there's no chimneys. Then he knows, like, okay, this key, there's there's a children, there's a child here. I feel like that is a extreme security liability, but <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Just gonna say, if it well, was us, I'd be like, we're not doing this. Well, but uh, Santa will use magic to find our room. <laughs> <laughs> all um, it takes is one Home Alone thief to be like, they've got keys on the outside of all the doors. <laughs> There's also a light show on the causeway that's outside, like right by the boats. It lights up every once in a while with holiday tunes and such. So okay, lots of good stuff. They do a lot of good stuff. I mean, my main question is, I feel like the elves, they need some stuff to do. They don't seem very busy. Do they? I mean, they're giving tours and giving candy out and stuff. But I mean, maybe these are you know, elves that have seniority and they're just, they got senioritis. <laughs> okay. They got all their work done early. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that is saying. a cool experience. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I don't, I'm curious as to, I mean, I'm sure this will go over well, but I always, mm-hmm. I mean, I think the Swan and Dolphins, it's kind of a cool little like thing in and of itself inside of Disney world. Well, the elf outpost is the new thing this right. year. Um, but, uh, you can also get up to 25% off, certain rates uh room rates over the season too so that's cool well there you go anyway there you go that's did they get it. rid of the um manslaughter balconies the murder balconies aren't they working on those they so were working on them i don't know if they got rid of all of them or not but yeah those those things feel very unsafe i took one look at those and i'm like i'm not stepping out here and i'm locking this door because i don't want our children right. to go out here either right so all right well, that is it for the news, but we do have a poll time. Poll time. All righty. This week, I asked the question, in your opinion, what is the best roller coaster at Disney World? So I think I asked this um, two years ago or something uh, before both Cosmic Rewind and Tron were open and we got very different results this time. So 61% said Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. 13% said Expedition Everest. 12% said Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Uh, Looks like 4% said Tron. And then everything else got 1% to 3%. Okay. So... Um, not shocked. Cosmic Rewind is still wildly popular. I have a question. How are they going to handle virtual queues now that park reservations are over? Like starting in January? Are they still going to have a virtual queue going to 2024? That's a good question. They might revert it back to how it used to be, which is you just do it at a set time in the park. Oh, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Um, well, but they're not doing. But I mean, if you think about park oh, reservations, no. people with date based tickets still kind of have a park reservation, and then the APs are the ones that still have to do right that. So uh, okay. So my assumption is it stays the same. Yeah. At least for all now. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Are you su- are you surprised by these results, Jared? Uh. No, I'm a little surprised that uh Seven Dwarfs Mine Train wasn't a little higher percentage just given the wait times for the thing but i'm sure most people ride that because like that's a ride that their kids will do yeah uh but no i mean no i'm not surprised cosmic rewinds that high this is what i don't understand about seven doors mine train it has been open for it'll be 10 years in may 
and it still gets like the highest crowds ever. And it, I just, it's perplexing to me because it's, it's a small roller coaster. Maybe it's because it's just like a family coaster. It's, it's a family and it's, it's in fantasy it. land. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, I get it. And people like Snow White. Absolutely. And it awesome. is, I will say it's a very smooth coaster. It's yeah. not like rough and it's, it's not one too like barnstormers that type, like that's obviously just for kids basically. And it's, it's rough and it's like a kid's first roller coaster, but yeah, I think Seven Dwarfs, while not the most thrilling in the world, is very smooth and it's fun. Well, the top three, the Cosmic Rewind, Expedition Everest, and Big Thunder are also my top three. So, I mean, Big Thunder is my favorite. So, I know. I mean, I like Cosmic Rewind. I've ridden it like three or four times, but it's definitely the farthest I will go on roller coastering. You're like, we don't want to do it this time. That's fine with me. (laughs) Yeah. Like, if I had, like, like, could do it, like, okay. But yeah, it's not like. I don't know. It's just this whole spin. Like, I don't get motion sick, but at the same time, too, I don't necessarily want to walk around World Showcase and then be like, you guys want to go spin around at high speeds? Like, let's do it. Like, I just, it's not the park where you want to do that, at least to me, as much, because it's just such a food park. But yeah. it's, it is a cool ride. I will give you that. And it's very smooth. And I'm still yeah. shocked to this day that you can ride that thing. I have to be very, very careful. I'm very, very sneaky. I mean, I remember the first time I rode that, I got off because I was like, was the test dummy. And I was like, you're going to die if you ride that. And you're like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, I have to. okay. And then you were fine. Like, it's still yeah. very perplexing to me as to how motion sick you get that you were pretty good on that ride. I have to take half of um, the, the, it was the B word. Not, it's not a German mean. It's the other one. I don't know. I don't. What's that? I can't. Wow, I'm blanking. Anyway, I have to take motion. Benadryl. No, I know it's not. It's not biotin, is it? No, biotin's a vitamin. (laughs) I don't think. I can't remember. It does give you strong hair and and skin, though. (laughs) Um, whatever the other one is, um, I have to take half of one to even go on it. So I do have some prep work. And don't you sit in the middle? Yeah, I yeah, sitting in the middle is supposed to be the best place to sit. Um, but I can only ride like one thrill ride when I do this, like uh, it's basically like I have to go wanting to just do that. And that's pretty, pretty much it. Otherwise it just takes me out the rest of the day. So yeah, true. Anyway, Thank you everybody for participating in the poll this week. I will have a new poll next week. Yes. And if you want to be part of the next poll time, you can do that in two ways. You can join the capture the magic Facebook community over on Facebook, of course. And, uh, Jamie posts those in the, in as a poll in there. And you can also do it over on Instagram at captain magic, where she posts those in the stories. Yes. So both or either one do it, do it there, go there. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, let's get to our discussion, which, uh, I, I guess we're just going to call it what should go there. What should go there? What should go there? Instead of what's not there. Which I will say the first thing uh, when it said, <laughs> I thought when that read when we first got the show notes, it said, you know, when you're like, I have an idea. I thought it said, <laughs> where should it go? And then I thought, that's what she said. Like right away. Oh gosh. And no. then what? Your, your, your mind is no, I was, in the gutter. No, my sir. mind was Michael Scotting. And I was like... Oh, Scott, Michael Scotting. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's what should. I was like, okay. I was yeah. I, I was confused. At like, what what should go where? But anyways. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to do... We've got five things here. So we're going to do... These are abandoned places. Well, four yeah. are abandoned. Well, it's, it's basically like they're just sitting empty right now. Disney's not doing anything with them currently. And we're just kind of like, okay... What would we do with them? What would we put in there? I have a fifth one we could add. Okay. Discovery Island. Well, okay. <laughs> we can maybe get to that one. I'm just kidding. We don't have to do it. Okay. Because that not, they'll never do anything with that. Probably not. I probably. actually think they may have done some secret experiments on that island, and that's why they just leave it. They're just like, we can't. You know, just leave it there. <laughs> probably. They're like, hey, let's not touch that. What's the, island? Cool What's the movie with uh, uh, the island of Dr. Moreau or whatever? Mm-hmm. We're in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like that. They did some stuff yeah. over there, and there's a little civilization of people that live there, and they're just like, leave them alone. Just never go over there. Pretty much. All right. All right. Yeah. So we have four slots. We have Stitch's Great Escape, Wonder of Life Pavilion, the Wonders of Life, excuse me, Wonders, the Voyage of the Little Mermaid, and Primeval World over there, even though it's gone. Right. But there is a giant void in and that. And this is supposing that we haven't heard anything blue sky about that area. Well, okay. this is as blue sky as Disney's blue sky. <laughs> well, so if you want do we blue- have concept art? 
No. I can draw some real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I can go, listen, I can go AI and be like, draw me, and then we'll get something up in like five minutes. And then the last one we're going to do is what attraction, what is one attraction you would say goodbye to in a heartbeat, and what would you replace with it? Pretty much. And why is it Mission Space? Well, let's not, let's just like, <laughs> <laughs> let's not say everything. Sorry. <laughs> when we why go back into do stuff. you love Mission Space? Excuse me. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, let's start with number one here, which is okay. Stitch's Great Escape, which is over in Tomorrowland. What would, now this has yeah. been, how long has it been vacant for oh, gosh. 25 years? 25 years? No. I have a feeling um, I'm not that far off. Uh, that's a great question. Five years? No, longer than that, right? Has it been longer than that? Maybe I, I'm not sure. Um, it was uh, Alien Encounter, extra extraterrestrial. Um, uh, let's see, opened in the '90s, I believe, and it was really scary. I do remember that a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, it was it scared me a lot. So, and they made Stitch's Great Escape. Basically, he's the alien, but it's like real silly and yeah, like it was a good. Ride, so this closed January 6, 2018. I was right. So five years. Okay. I thought it was longer than that. I was right. Okay. Um, but anyway, okay. So this space, it's right there in Tomorrowland. Like right when you walk in, it's on the left. And they've used the space for other things in the past. So I think they used it for, uh, they've used it for meet and greets before. They've used it for a gift shop, like a pop-up shop, stuff like that. Um, what, what kind of thing would fit into Tomorrowland in that space? Well, see, my issue with Tomorrowland in general is it doesn't know what it wants to be, and it still doesn't. This has bugged me about Tomorrowland for a long time. It's a land that has no identity, and Tron didn't help. I just want to put it out there. Tron didn't help. <laughs> the aesthetic of Tron, so I, I've felt for a while that Tomorrowland would be best served as like a, it's like a 1980s stylized vision of the future. So I think about it like a, not how the 80s was, but how a lot of times it was perceived as it would be. Kind of like a, almost like how the Incredibles take the 1950s aesthetic and they kind of add like technology to it. Kind of like that. I think that would actually kind of look cool in here. Space Mountain would fit in there. Tron, if you take away the IP of Tron, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could say with the IP it kind of does, but Tron could fit in that aesthetic. But I think you'd have to figure out what Tomorrowland wants to be in that sense. Well, this is just supposed to be what you right. think it is. But that's what I'm saying. So then you could be like, okay, what does what goes into this land? So to me, with that aesthetic in mind, I would go, because again, you know Disney's going to go with an IP. Mm -hmm. I would go with Wreck-It Ralph. Be Which I think is a, has been the rumor. It's been rumored it. for a while. It actually, to me, would fit, because again, Wreck-It Ralph's like a 1980s video game. So even if you wanted to make Tomorrowland this 1980s, I, I would settle for a 1980s Tomorrowland thing. Uh, I think it would fit in there. I, I like Wreck-It Ralph. I think the video game aspect of it could open you up to doing some unique things with a, a, a ride or attraction, whatever you want to do here. And I, you know, I mean, they had a sequel to it. I think it's a pretty, I mean, I don't really care for the second movie. The first one I thought was really good. So to me, I would go, I would first, if, if I was tasked with this, I would first solve the issue of like, what is Tomorrowland? Let's sit down and talk to it. And then I would be like, okay, if we're, if that's what we're going, then, then wreck it Ralph. But what about you? Well, if we're, if we're sticking with IPs, maybe like something about Inside Out. I don't think Inside Out was popular enough though. I mean, it's very popular. But again, like, but what would Inside Out? What was what would the? I guess I, that what would Tomorrowland be then if you're putting Inside Out? Well, see, so that's the question. Again, it's it's a jumbled mess. It's, is it is it future or is it space, <laughs> or is it Carousel Progress? <laughs> right, kind of thrown in there. Right. Um. So yeah, I don't know. Like, it's I don't know because Inside Out deals with you know like you know not anything futuristic. Correct. Technology, maybe. I feel like Inside Out would know. almost would almost be something in Epcot if you're going to stick an IP. And granted, I don't, I'm not saying I would be a fan of more IPs in Epcot, but I feel like that maybe with because they used to have like the Bodies of Wonder and stuff like that. Like you could yeah. maybe do something with that in there. Well, okay. I guess we'll just skip to number two then. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't trying to jump to that. I was just simply okay. I was just thinking out loud here because well, again, this is just a thought experiment. This isn't like with Guardians. I know it's already an Epcot. Would Guardians the Galaxy work? 
in that space and some for something. Uh, it's an IP and it's kind it's it's retro but, but space. Not to me. I don't like Marvel stuff in Magic Kingdom. To me. Oh. That's just me. I don't know if it would fit in tomorrow. But again, they already have it in Epcot too. Okay. That's just me though. I mean, I again, a lot of this just comes down to like what is Tomorrowland? <laughs> like yeah. you'd well, have to yeah. you'd have to define that to really figure out cuz again, Stitch never f- I, I guess to anybody's credit that has any ideas in here, it's not like Stitch ever fit the tom- fit the uh, Tomorrowland aesthetic anyways. Right. So they just stuck right. that in there. Yep. So I, I think Tomorrowland for a long time has been a land without an identity. And that's probably one reason why they haven't put anything in here. Which, if you think about it, that is some prime real estate. It's right there. Right off the hub. One of the first things you see when you enter into Tomorrowland. And you've got nothing and Monsters, Inc. lap floor. Which, again, that also does not fit Tomorrowland. So, if anything, you may be more right than me. Because I'm using... I'm, I'm trying to set up Tomorrowland and... Every, and Disney apparently is just like, well, we don't care. <laughs> just what do you well, want to put in here? They use it for stroller parking now. Like I outside. know, but you would think you'd want to make like a better first impression. <sighs> like walking into the land and having two really strong impressions versus just having an empty building and then like a, I guess like a comedy show. Which again, Monsters yeah. Inc. is fine, but it's nothing that like, uh, to me, it's nothing that I really like, oh yeah, let's go do Monsters Inc. Yeah. So you say Wreck-It Ralph, I say Inside Out. Do you like Inside Out? Yeah, it's a cute movie. I don't know if I ever saw the whole thing. Okay. Okay. All right, let's move on to number two, the Wonders of Life Pavilion. Um, In Epcot. Yes. By Mission Space and Test Track. Yes. How long has it been closed? Mm, that's a great question we probably should have known this before we started this i'll ask real quick <laughs> well it was it's closed as it as its original iteration for a long so time it closed january 1st 2007 yeah as it as it previously was now it served as a festival center it's been a bunch of other things until like 20 2019 19, 2019 i think was the last year they used it for that something like that um but yeah, right now it's just, you know, sitting empty, I'm assuming. I mean, there's been rumors abound. Anything from, I mean, I remember the rumor being out there that they were going to do like Wakanda. Now they can't do oh, Black yeah. Panther because Black Panther's rights are still with Universal, but they could do Wakanda. That was a rumor there for a bit. There's been a lot of things rumored. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the fact that you've got... So back here, where well, you got Mission Space and you got Guardians, I feel like obviously test track. and Test Track. Yeah. So I feel like you have a pretty heavy space theme. Uh huh. With those two, Test Track being the one <laughs> doesn't really fit. I'm noticing Disney's lands aren't very cohesive sometimes. Um, maybe you do something space related. Um. Yeah. I don't personally speaking, even though somebody who, who loves Marvel comics, I don't think Wakanda makes much sense. I'd agree. I don't think it fits here at all. I mean, I think that what they were going for was the technology aspect of Wakanda. Right. I think so. Is what but again, I for. think if you're going to do Wakanda that you, maybe that make more sense in like animal kingdom. Yeah, but does it? D- well, that's the thing. I don't think it does. That's the kind of the problem with the Marvel stuff is they don't have the full rights to stuff. So right. you start just being like, Guardians being this the outlier because it was so popular. The comic was involved in the other stuff. So it's like, and they suck it in Epcot, which if you had full rights to all the Marvel stuff, then they would probably just, who knows? Ideally, you would just have an entire Marvel area, kind of like they have at Disneyland. But since they don't have that, you're caught with this like, okay, well, we can't use Black Panther, but we'll use the city because it has technology. And then we'll use this because it has that. Like, we can't use Iron Man, but we'll use Iron Man's, house you know it's just you start doing weird stuff like that so um uh, yeah and, and you can make the argument too like does guardians really fit in there well depends on what your vision of epcot is or was you know what i mean like epcot obviously is not the same as it was viewed probably even 10 years ago uh to me i maybe just keep it simple and you do something for the festivals like have your seminars in here because mm-hmm. remember they used to do that you used to have like all sorts of seminars you could sign up for oh yeah they had a couple of well i think one maybe two of the festival 
booths were set up in there. I think Appleseed yeah. Orchard was in there one year. Um, they had, you know, wine seminars, cheese seminars. They used to do this all um, the time, yeah. Tasting seminars. They had merchandise set up over there. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of space. There's also separate areas where they did it because they had a lot of like, a lot of like health and science, like learning opportunities Mm-hmm. back of the day and i mean yeah it needs a, a, a huge like overhaul like it just looks very old or you looked old in there um but yeah i think they should go back to using it for the festival i don't see anything wrong with that well you could do i mean it wasn't this where the play pavilion was going to be yeah so they originally in the original plans for the overhaul of epcot they had the play pavilion located in here and it reminded me a lot of the wreck it ralph 2 um Oh, the internet, internet yeah. what the internet looked like that's kind of what it reminded me of a lot of that kind of by stuff. the way I've, i have a screenshot i'll we'll talk about this in some future show of all of the things that didn't happen with the epcot reimagining of epcot that they said were coming it's wild when you actually yeah. look at it all it's kind of crazy but yeah uh you know if they if you wanted to do the play pavilion i actually think that's kind of a cool idea they said it was something that would always be changing and i think too if you, you know they took out disney quest over Disney Springs, which was a pretty popular thing that was replaced with something that is not popular and is already shut down. It kind of had a Disney Quest vibe to it. You could almost kind of make that oh, what okay. this is, like a, a newer That's version, a, a different idea. version of Disney Quest in here. So I, I think that, I mean, honestly, thinking out loud here, I would probably rather have something like that versus just more stuff for the festivals because there's already tons uh-huh. of stuff for the festivals. Okay. But, and you know, I don't know how much we want that invading outside of world showcase right but i don't know to me that's maybe what i would go but i'm also i like video games and stuff like that so okay fair enough do you have any uh, no the festival oh. stuff was just my idea okay it wasn't a good idea but it was my idea. hey, hey listen <laughs> nothing's in there now so anything's a better idea than what's in there right hey, now i guess so so all right, uh, let's move over to over in hollywood studios of the voyage of the little mermaid which this has been closed since... It's, it's been closed since the pandemic, so it's been closed for three and a half years. Okay. Um. Okay, so this show first debuted in the 90s, like 91, I believe, maybe 1990, 92, something like that. And so it's been around for a very long time. I don't think it should stick around as its original iteration. I think that if they do something with this, I think they should either update the show or... Or just take it out and do something completely different, like change the stage and, and update the the technology. I mean, those lasers <laughs> that made the made it look like you were under the waves. I'm trying to remember. It's I been did a like lot. that. I don't know the last time I actually saw this show before it went away. I mean, oh, it's, really? It's been a long. I vaguely yeah. remember stuff about this. Well, that whole area, you know, Animation Courtyard is just it's it's a confusing area because you got a lot of of the Disney Junior stuff. On one side, then you got Launch Bay on the back, and then you've got a gift shop, but it's also cl- it's closed, and they Cast just use it for stuff seating. Back there. Yeah, so it's like it's very confusing area back there. So I think I think what they should do, honestly, is make that all a Disney Junior area, because I think there's a lot enough kids that enjoy the Disney Junior shows and the characters that they could do something with that. Like I know they have, you know, the Disney Junior dance party, and they have that. But why not put some kind of like show or something? You could. I mean, you know? to me, this falls into again the Tomorrowland. Like, like you said, what do you want to do with this area? Because now it doesn't make any sense. It's I've never thought it made any sense to have when Galaxy's Edge opened. So you have Star Tours, and then you also have this Star Wars like meet. So it's like right. you've got these three separate Star Wars areas in the same park. So that's just disjointed to begin with. So it's like figure out what you want to do here. To me, I've always thought this area you could do some stuff with him. There's always that rumor too of like doing a Pixar land or a Pixar area. You know, I don't hate the idea of doing Disney Junior, but I feel like a Pixar area back here would would be something that would work with I, I feel like one of the the IPs that are really underrepresented is like uh Incredibles. I feel like well, Incredibles has their own little area, Pixar Place, right now. Okay, but it's just stuff. I'm talking about like an actual ride or something else, like not just having meet and greets, like something more like permanent, specific to to them. But yeah, I mean, it just depends on what you want to do here. So I, you know, either do Pixar or do all Disney Junior 
or something like that. I mean, I can tell you, if Disney had the rights to it, I'm sure they would put Bluey in there, but they don't have the rights to it. I believe you are correct. Because <laughs> Bluey is the most popular thing on Disney Plus, and Disney does not make it, and they do not own the rights to it. Right, right. And I've often been curious if there's a battle going on to try and get theme park rights for Bluey, because I've seen some things in some, some surveys from different companies where I'm like, I bet you... All I know is I'm sure there's a lot of money to be paid out for people that want Bluey in the theme parks. There's a lot of guests that are confused that there's no Bluey in the parks. They do ask and cast members like, nope, sorry. Well, I mean, it's on Disney. It's on Disney Plus. It's also on Disney Junior. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an insanely popular show. Yep. So people assume because it's on Disney that they make it, but they don't. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. Right. So. I'm sure if they could get the rights to it, that that's what they would. I mean, that would make a lot of sense to put a bluey just show in there. I mean, that's that would be great. Do some kind of Disney Junior character show. That's what I was thinking. So yeah, okay. There we go, and get rid of uh, Launch Bay. To me, <sighs> yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah. Again, have these characters meet them in Galaxy's Edge. I've never actually never understood that. Why would you not just have them where you could just meet them in Galaxy's Edge? I know BB-8 I mean, is set up in that space pretty well and they would have to figure out where he would go in galaxy's edge well i know the reasoning is it doesn't fit quote the timeline maybe that too <laughs> i can have an idea get rid of the timeline and oh just my. have all the star wars characters in a star wars land sorry i digress i couldn't help myself okay sorry sorry let's move on to animal to kingdom on, i had to go on a kathleen kennedy rant there okay, okay uh it's cathartic every month i go on one and i'm fine so let's go to number four, which is uh, Primeval World or where it was over in <laughs> the space Animal Kingdom, which I was not sad to see Primeval World go because that was a carnival ride at best. Mm-hmm. Did you you've ridden that, haven't you? I tried. <laughs> uh, we, we, we were on it and it broke down. And so I actually never wrote it. it did that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not a fun experience. A little jerky. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really scream like, you know, here's the magic. It just screams. <laughs> We're at a carnival in the middle of uh, it remind me of being at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds. Yeah. It remind me. But so well, that's gone. Well, actually, the reason it actually went away is because the replacement parts for it, uh, the company, I think originally it made that ride went out of business or something. So Disney was having to sort of make these parts their own and they were getting too expensive. That's the main reason why they shut that thing down. That's crazy. Was I heard because it was just the maintenance on it was getting too much. But so now you have this open space back there in um, Dino Land. Mm-hmm. So I guess it comes down to what would you put in here and would it encompass like everything else around it? Like the carnival. What is that? What's the area called back there again? Chester and Hester's. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically like a, I mean, essentially it fits it. It's like it's in a fair. Kind of. I mean, I've got all those games that they do seem like they're kind of popular. I uh, Kids like to try and win stuff. It's true. Speaking because our it daughter, I've won her a couple of things in there. And you would think, oh, you won some stuff in here. And kids always just want more. They're always like, right. win more mm-hmm. things. And I'm like, okay. Right. But yeah, so I think kids like it to an extent. But I don't know how much like... I don't like our daughter though at this age. Like, I don't think she cares as much as she did when she was like four or five. Yeah, but um, so in this area, I mean, if you if you were to keep Dino Land as it is and just put something else there, um, gosh, I don't know. It's not big enough for like a water ride. It, would have it to be, is a small footprint. It's yeah. not big. Or I mean, if you were completely to completely retheme Dino Land altogether, um, that's a different story. That's a different you know topic, but. Um, if we were going by not what Disney has said, there's their blue sky idea with, you know, the, the tropical Americas basically. So like no Encanto, let's say they're not doing Encanto and and all that stuff. Um, what would you like to see in it? Well, I always lean toward, I would love, love if Imagineering was what Imagineering used to be. And they were allowed to come up with very original ideas. Like old school Imagineering, like when they came up with like Haunted Mansion and all these these rides that necessarily didn't have to be IP based. You're just allowed to think outside the box. Now, I also recognize this current state in which Disney's in with the leadership that that's not what they want to do. So thinking along the lines of something realistically, it would probably have to be IP based. To me, the thing that makes the most sense in that area 
and I'm not a huge fan of this, but Zootopia. I do think Zootopia makes the most, which was rumored, and I was surprised. Like Zootopia is going to get that show uh, replaced. It's a Bug's Life over there, or supposedly. I think that was actually Blue Sky as well. But uh, I think Zootopia would fit in with Animal Kingdom. To me, that footprint so small. I think you would have to just get rid of that whole area to put in an actual like attraction there. Yeah. Because other than that, I don't really know what else would fit. You'd have to get another carnival-like ride to really go in that little footprint. Right. And I don't think most people would really want that. And I don't know how beloved that whole area really is. Like with the carnival games and... I mean, it it gets fairly busy, but not like other areas of the park. I mean, and the one thing... I would say I don't I wouldn't want to get rid of the Triceratops spin because that is something like kids do like and there's not a lot of stuff for kids in this park. So that is one thing kids will ride in terms of like rides, I mean. Okay. Like kids like that ride. I know it's mm-hmm. a Dumbo like ride, but you could essentially I mean you could move that thing. I think you could I move, guess you yeah, I guess you could. Or make something that's a part or make that an entire kids area and lean into maybe Moana. Okay, so I would like that. I would like to see Moana area. I think that would be beautiful. I, I mean, that would be cool. I mean, it, as I think, you could leave the Triceratops spin, make it maybe a, uh, I don't know, Maui spinner. I don't know, something. And then do something over there, like incorporate with Moana. I think that would be cool. I think that, well, first off, I think that's something that's plausible. I think that's something that kids, and I, I think our daughter, she would she would enjoy. Yeah, Absolutely. For sure. I don't know what type of. I mean, it would have to be probably be a water ride. I mean, I would. I would say take the Moana Journey of Water and put it. I feel like that is where that was supposed I to go. Feel like it maybe what you know we've talked about that before. I, I don't feel know like if it's true. If but you could pick up something and move it, I would say take that out of Epcot and put it over <laughs> here, and you'd be like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Like Animal Kingdom gets really, really hot. I mean, so does Epcot, but I just mean like, you know, Animal Kingdom sometimes feel like the service of the sun. Sure. Plop it back there with a Moana themed land and, and a couple other things. I feel like that would work pretty well. I agree. I do agree. And I feel like they sh- could have a, like a, a restaurant that's coconut themed. I mean, you, uh, yeah. I mean, pol- coconuts was there was what they ate. Or just Great. something like Tiki Poly related as well. Like, yeah, I've, I, I, that vibe has worked at Disney for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel like, I feel like, yeah. I feel like it's Disney, uh, we'll send them the tape. <laughs> I'll record this and I'll put a little note on it. Okay. We'll make it like a mixtape. Right. No, I think I actually think, honestly, just thinking about it loud, I think that would be a pretty fun idea. I would like that. I, I, I we like Encanto, but um, if it, fitting in with Animal Kingdom, not really, not not. Yeah, I mean, Enco- I yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like, I feel like Animal Kingdom is such a unique park, and I feel like the the two IPs, at least to me, that stick out the most would be Zootopia, Moana, and I guess you'd also say, because they do have the rights to it now, which would be like Ice Age. Oh. As those are animal. But yeah. Ice Age, given that's that's something that like, I guess if you're going to keep it as Dinosaur Land, Ice Age could make sense because obviously it's in the same, you know, they dinosaur could, era. You know, they could, they could go the uh, SeaWorld route and have a penguin section. Listen, I, Antarctica. Listen, I love penguins. They have Asia. They have Africa. I, did I ever tell you I Reese's. wanted? I always wanted a pet penguin. No, I thought it'd be pretty cool. To have a little he walks next to you, just waddles around. Yeah, I mean, granted, it wouldn't really work because you know they need cold all the time. Okay, I, don't like cold. I take back. I want Dinoly to turn into Antarctica and just be <laughs> penguins. That's what I want. You could just go to Sea World that. and get that. I know, but I but I why can't I have an animal kingdom? Obviously, it'd have to be in an enclosure. I mean, it would fit. Cold, and, I mean, but. honestly, if with Animal Kingdom's original theming and idea, that would be something that they you would think that they would want to do. Yeah. Did they have the right? They don't have the rights to the pink ones. No, that's Nickelodeon. I used to love that show. That's like the pink ones that were like military. Oh, I think, yeah. I think they were from that movie. What was that movie? Um, ben Stiller and Chris Rock voiced like the lion and something like that. Madagascar. Madagascar. That's yeah. Pink that, ones in Madagascar. That's, that's universal. I know. Well, I think it's Nickel. Whatever it was. I always liked that that show. But I was thinking that if Dis- if Disney could do something along those lines, I know they don't have that IP, but. <laughs> I think we'll see Basically, them over at Universal. anything but what's there now. Okay. That's kind of what we're saying. Sure. If you just want to put an, an above ground pool back there. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, I'm not saying sure. it's better, but I don't think it'd be worse. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but okay, Jared. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, fine. You fine. got the above ground pool and then a guy just spraying a hose and to cool you off. How's that? 
Okay. You're from Missouri. This was an attraction at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds. Yes. You go go see I'm sure. go see Water Dave. He'll hose you down. What are you even talking about anymore? I don't know. I don't know either. My brain's gone. Anyways. Yep. All right. I don't know what we solved there, but we have some ideas. All right. And the last one, what is one attraction you would say goodbye to in a heartbeat and what would you replace it with? Do you want my answer first? I, I do. Go for it. Well, um, <clears throat> if you had asked me like two or three years ago, I would have said primeval world, <laughs> but that's not there anymore. Mission accomplished. Um, you know, so we, we always talk about it's a small world and putting like tangled in there. Like that was mm-hmm. always a, a topic of conversation and everything. I'm like, that's fine. Um, I don't do spinning rides and I don't do um, like mission space. So I'm going to say mission space. I would like to see that ride leave, go away. Um, I don't enjoy it. The really intense part. I don't enjoy it when it's not intense because it's either too like boring, like nothing happens or it makes me want to, you know, get sick basically. Mm-hmm. So I would like to take out mission space and I want horizons back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just kidding. I know it will never happen. I feel but. like as a nostalgia win, that would probably go over pretty well nowadays. Oh man. Um, Seriously. I, so this is the, the first thing that popped in my head on this question was mission space just because mm-hmm. You're right. It's just such a nothing ride. I know it, people. Some people like it. I mean, I'm just, I'm listen, just not one of them. <laughs> there's always people that like something. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I've ridden the most intense version and like it's it's cool. But again, Epcot's not the park where I want to do a lot of spinning. It's like, let's no. go ride Guardians of the Galaxy and then Mission Space. You're like, and then no, thank you. go eat a bunch of food. I don't think. No. Like, I feel like at least when I'm at Epcot, it's not like the mode that I'm in. So I agree. Now, here's my thing. Okay, you take out Mission Space, move space, you know, the the Space 220 restaurant. Move that. Okay. Or something. But you take out Mission Space and you take out the Wonders of Life Pavilion and you just put some giant thing back here. Some big old huge attraction or land. Okay. I mean, the Mission Space takes up quite a bit of room. I know. They both together would be a pretty big footprint and you could do something pretty cool in there. Yeah. I feel like together... And then you would have, you know, you got Guardians, maybe something space related, and then Test Track. You'd have a nice little trio of something. Well, now, what you put there, I don't really know. Don't forget, they are going to eventually redo Test Track. It, it, yes, they they said that they would like to redo Test Track, which, um, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, Test Track is one of those, like, I feel like you're just, you, most people ride that because they like to go really 60 some miles an hour with the top yeah. down, and that's yep. kind of it. Everything else before that is just sort of like you just put up with it until you get to the outside. Part. I like making the car. I think that's fun. Yeah, I mean it's a yeah. I wish it actually had an impact other than just like I know you get like a quote score, but I feel like if I wish it got more of an impact, like you could actually make your car go faster. Oh, you know what I mean? Or yeah. like less, or like it handles differently. I don't know. That that may be asking too much. Well, what? A, an, it, okay, so if I we take admission space out and did away with it, but left the restaurant, like. Maybe what about like getting into like a simulator, like a not not like that is now, but like an actual space rocket simulator? Isn't like, that what Mission Space is supposed to be? I mean, well, I guess so. I feel like like, a, like a real one. But I feel like any of those would be the same issue you would have with Mission Space, probably. Yeah. Okay. So I like get the, away I, from space then. Well, I mean, like Mission different. Space, you literally are blasting off. In, I mean, it's supposed to simulate. I guess. An I guess you're right. I, I was thinking more like if you were touring NASA and like, like, like Kennedy Space Center, like a real rocket kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. What if you put the hot air balloon from Disney Springs right there? Um, <laughs> I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't. I, and now, in terms of what would go there, I mean, something space related. Um, again, oh. I just run, especially, I just run straight to, well, you know, it's going to have to be IP related. So it's like, what? Yeah. You know, they're not going to put Star Wars here, or they shouldn't. No. So it's like, what would you put here? Uh, again, this is kind of the area where I'm with, I would love for them to go and be like, okay, we got this space here, Imagineering, come up with something brand new. Mm-hmm. like space like a space adventure i don't know i think that would become something kind of cool. and they could even do that and then do what they did with pirates of the caribbean and turn it into you know if, if 
you know, instead of making remakes, they could make it into a movie, perhaps that would do well. But um, yeah, I don't know what, what would go there. I would say space related, given what's the theme there. But, but what yeah, that is, I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't. I mean, my main one, I would say, what attraction would you say goodbye to? I go to what you had said, which is get rid of Small World, put in a Tangle Ride. To me, that's the easiest win you have at any of the parks. And that I say that I respect and love Walt and the history of him, but the Small World in Disney World is a is not the original. Right. It's a copycat. Right. So for that reason, just use that same ride. And this idea I've, I've said for years now, but you turn that into a tangled ride, and in there you've got you go around a bend, you're in the boat, and you got that whole lantern scene. Like I feel like it's in Fantasyland. Tangled's underrated. It's a very popular franchise. Listen, we all win. It's a win-win. Yep. So it's a win-win. Absolutely. Even people that like Small World would be like, mm, okay. <laughs> it'll never happen. Oh, I don't think it'll ever happen. Nope. But, you know, one can hope. A girl can dream. Okay. Yes. So, all right. Anything else you want to add? I don't think so. It was just a nice, friendly, fun discussion. I was very hostile. but You kind of were hostile. I wasn't hostile, was I? <laughs> <laughs> I was being hostile. Uh, no, you're fine. All right. Well, that will do it for the show. Um, if you want to find more content from us, we actually have a video right now on the YouTube channel. There's another Epic Universe construction update that just came out. Uh, by the time you hear this, like two days, three days ago, uh, about the progress over there, which is a lot. A lot of mm-hmm. stuff going on there. Mm-hmm. But also check us out on uh, the other YouTube channel, which we have video versions of the show over there at CTM Podcast. And we have show clips as well. So if you'd rather watch us versus listen and follow us on social media, we're at Cap the Magic everywhere except for TikTok where we're at Capture the Magic. And if you want even more content, uh, we have some other shows. We have the CTM Universal Show, which is our Universal Studio show. And we have that twice a month. And we'll have a new episode there probably on Monday. Uh, Probably, yeah. Because we're going to Universal when we're... Like on, are we going to Universal? Saturday. Saturday, that's right. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't rain. Well, depending on the rains. But uh, we'll probably talk about some Christmas stuff at Universal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jamie has Trip Tales, which is her trip report show. And the Mm -hmm. next episode there is coming out. It just came out uh, today. Today. Tuesday. So uh, we won't have another one until January. There you go. And uh, yeah, I was going to say programming note. We're not going to do a show the week of Christmas or after that. Right? Yeah. Basically, after our last episode is next Thursday. Um, the twenty first, I believe, and then that'll be the last episode of the year. So. Yeah, so we we always take a little bit of a week or two break toward the end of the year, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll probably do some streaming though in Club Thirty Two, and maybe you know who knows, uh, play some video games over the break, something like that. So probably some stuff going on in that aspect. So if you want some content, you can always look at Club Thirty Two CTMVIP dot com, and uh, yeah, so that will do it for the show. So I uh, just want to thank everybody for listening and or watching. And uh, thank you, Jamie, for joining. Thank you. And as Jamie always likes to say, we will see you in the parks. Bye.